My name is Tracy Fox, an instructor at Thomas Jefferson University's Department of Radiologic and Imaging Sciences. And this presentation is on transducer covers for general purpose and endocavitary scanning. Ultrasound is used in several specialty areas, such as abdominal, GYN, transrectal, vascular, interventional procedures such as PIC line insertion, surgery, anesthesia, and emergency medicine. These studies require that you understand the procedures of infection control and the appropriate use of transducer covers. For non-sterile studies, such as open wound scanning, a completely sterile field is not necessary. For sterile studies, completely unfolding and placing the transducer cover allows the sterile field to be established, thus promoting patient and staff safety. Always place drapes on surfaces, ultrasound equipment, and instrument trays within the designated sterile field. This presentation will concentrate on barrier technology for general purpose and endocavitary ultrasound. Let's begin with an introduction to the procedures of infection control. In the healthcare setting, we need to be concerned with the spread of infectious diseases including, but not limited to, bacteria such as multidrug resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA or MRSA, fungi, and viruses such as hepatitis, HIV, herpes simplex type 2, influenza, and VRE. The patient's medical history may not present the healthcare worker with a full picture. Therefore, we follow what is called universal precautions. The principle of universal precautions is to treat every patient as if he or she has a communicable disease. For non-invasive studies on unbroken skin, transducer covers are not typically used unless there is the potential for contamination with blood or body fluids. However, in the presence of open sores, skin lesions, or open wounds, a transducer cover should always be used. General purpose transducer covers are available in many materials, widths, and lengths. Specialized folding techniques of the covers allow for either a single person or dual person approach to application using proper sterile technique. Covers designed for use in a sterile environment usually provide a long telescoping extension that will cover the cord of the transducer extending the sterile field. We are working with a clean but not sterile transducer and a non-sterile probe cover such as you might use for routine scanning when there was potential for contamination of the transducer with blood or body fluids. Create an opening in your cover for gel, then apply gel in the transducer cover. Once the gel is in the cover, place the transducer in the cover and extend the cover down over the length of the cord. Check carefully and remove any air bubbles that are between the transducer face and the cover. Apply elastic bands to secure the cover in place. First, establish a sterile field by opening a sterile drape or procedure kit. Drop the cover and other contents of the pack onto the sterile field. Next, put on sterile gloves using standard technique. Open the pack to expose the cuff area of the gloves touching only what will be inside of the glove. Get the first glove on, and then the second glove. Using the single person approach to applying a general purpose transducer cover, open the sterile gel packet, then create an opening in the cover and apply gel. Once the gel is in the cover, place over the array of the transducer and extend the cover down over the length of the cord, ensuring proper sterile technique. Check carefully and remove any air bubbles that are between the transducer face and the cover. While remaining in the sterile field, apply enclosed sterile elastic bands to secure the cover in place. Using the dual person approach to applying a general purpose transducer cover, the non-sterile person opens the procedure kit, placing it onto the sterile tray. The sterile person opens the sterile gel packet and creates an opening in the cover and applies gel. The non-sterile person places the transducer into the cover. The sterile person then extends the cover down over the length of the cord, ensuring proper sterile technique. 
check carefully and remove any air bubbles that are between the transducer face and the cover. While remaining in the sterile field, apply enclosed sterile elastic bands to secure the cover in place. Body orifices are not considered a sterile environment, so most transvaginal studies do not require the use of a sterile cover. The objective of the cover is to prevent gross contamination of the transducer with blood and or body fluids, and to prevent the transmission of disease to the next patient and the healthcare professional. Let's go through the steps to prepare a transvaginal transducer for endocavitary scanning. We'll begin with the transducer being soaked in a disinfecting solution. At a minimum, gloves and eye protection should be worn whenever working with a disinfecting solution, particularly glutaraldehyde-based solutions. Remove the transducer from the disinfecting solution. The transducer should have been thoroughly cleaned after the previous use and before being placed in the disinfecting solution. Thoroughly rinse the sterilizing solution from the transducer and dry with a soft cloth. There are several types of transvaginal transducer covers available. The most fundamental choice is a cover that matches the shape and form factor of the transducer you are using. Transducer covers are available in sterile and non-sterile forms in a variety of materials including latex and several latex-free alternatives such as proprietary materials like Sivflex or NeoGuard. If you're not sure which cover to use, refer to your ultrasound manual for your recommended accessory supplier. So. Now that we have an overview of some of the types of transducer covers that are available, let's take a look at how the transducer covers are applied. Apply gel inside the transducer cover and place the transducer cover onto the transducer. Check carefully and remove any air bubbles that are between the transducer face and the transducer cover. Some labs use elastic bands to secure the cover. When done, wrap or cover the transducer until ready for use. When performing a transrectal ultrasound, there are several types of transducer covers available. Transrectal ultrasound is an invasive procedure that may involve tissue biopsy or brachytherapy, seed or marker implantation. Some transducers use a double cover method to create a balloon or water bath through which to scan. This involves placement of one cover that forms the inner layer. This cover must include the gel covering the transducer face. Both the inner and the outer cover are secured to the transducer with enclosed elastic bands. This allows the outer cover to be filled with water to create a balloon that will displace any air between the cover and the wall of the rectum. An alternative covering method for transrectal procedures may involve use of an endocavitary balloon. This transducer standoff device is an alternative example of how to perform scanning and transperineal procedures for needle guidance, core biopsy, fiducial marker placement, brachytherapy, or cryotherapy. Placing the appropriate amount of gel inside the endocavity balloon or on the transducer face aids in scan quality, application, and removal of the balloon. Inserting the transducer into the balloon with the fill tube oriented in top center of the transducer, pull the balloon tightly over the transducer face, removing wrinkles or air bubbles. Visually orientate the balloon so lateral seams are a symmetrical distance from the longitudinal array. Use a 30cc syringe to fill the balloon with saline solution. Aspirate until air is removed. Do not overinflate the balloon. During the procedure, it is essential that gloves are worn to prevent contamination of both operator and machine. And don't forget hand washing. Proper hand washing technique must always be followed before preparing the transducer and after the procedure. Hands should be washed using soap and warm running water. Begin with hands pointing down. Rub hands vigorously during washing for at least 20 seconds. First palm to palm. Second, right palm over left dorsum and left palm over right dorsum. Third, palm to palm, fingers interlaced. Fourth, 
backs of fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Fifth, rotational rubbing of right thumb clasped in left palm and vice versa. Sixth, rotational rubbing backwards and forwards with clasped fingers of right hand in left palm and vice versa. This forces soap and water under fingernails. Don't forget to include wrists. Dry hands well using paper towels. Turn off faucet with the towel. Once the study is over, remove the cover. The cover should be disposed of as biohazard trash or as required by your facility. The transducer should be cleaned with soap and water, removing all gel and gross contamination. If necessary, a small brush may be used to clean the crevices of the transducer. Rinse and dry the transducer. So, now that you've seen how to apply a transducer cover and dispose of it following the exam, let's review some terminology. The terms clean, high-level disinfection, and sterilization are oftentimes confused. It is recommended that users follow the FDA-issued guidelines for reprocessing ultrasound transducer assemblies. You must also follow the manufacturer guidelines for the ultrasound system you are using. Every manufacturer has requirements and limitations on what materials may be used on the transducer. To clean something is the physical removal of debris. We clean the transducer by thoroughly washing it with soap and water and any spray or wipes recommended by your transducer manufacturer. High-level disinfection, by comparison, is the destruction of most microbes, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Even with high-level disinfection, bacterial spores may not be killed. The AIUM recommends use of high-level disinfection for endocavitary ultrasound transducers. The transducer should soak for the requisite amount of time for disinfection to occur. It is important to always follow the manufacturer guidelines for preparing and using the disinfection solution. It is also imperative to refer to your system manual for approved and compatible solutions for disinfecting your transducer. Personal protection equipment, PPEs such as hand and eye protection, should be worn while working with these solutions, and the solution should be stored in a well-ventilated room or in a device with a vapor management system. Follow your facility's guidelines to ensure proper storage. When we use the term sterilized, it implies that all microbial life, including spores, are killed by the process. No living organisms should remain after sterilization. It is important to note that transducer materials can be negatively affected by temperatures typically used during heat sterilization. Transducers are not heat stable. At high temperatures, the transducer's piezoelectric material can depolarize. Depolarization means that the transducer no longer has the ability to convert electricity into sound, its essential role. Even in cases where the PZT does not completely depolarize, the crystal's performance may degrade, a process sometimes called aging. Another practical issue is the effect of heat upon the epoxy-like materials found in the backing material, matching layer, and bonding agents. During exposure to elevated temperatures, these materials may soften and then re-harden in deformed states during cooling. As a result, alternate methods of infection control should be considered. The transducer may then be placed in a clean but not sterile environment, such as a transducer rack or on the ultrasound system. Appropriate cleaning and disinfection of the ultrasound equipment is essential, especially when invasive procedures are being performed. Always follow FDA and AIOM guidelines, as well as manufacturer recommendations, and always follow the manufacturer guidelines for the disinfecting solution you are using. As with any process, things can go wrong during a procedure. One problem that could be encountered is selecting the incorrect transducer cover for the procedure being performed. Transducer covers are designed to fit a wide array of transducers. It is important to make sure your cover is the proper material, width, and length to fit your transducer. Another potential problem is the inadvertent puncture of the transducer cover during an exam. While transducer covers are durable and designed to handle a substantial level of wear and tear, 
it is possible to puncture the cover. It must be assumed that the cover is then contaminated with blood or body fluids and must be thoroughly cleaned of any gross contamination before being placed into the disinfection solution. If the exam is not complete, at the time the sterile barrier is compromised, the transducer should not be used until properly recovered. A third potential problem that could be encountered is improperly cleaning, disinfecting, or sterilizing the transducer after use. Using a transducer cover at all time allows a barrier to be established, thus promoting patient and staff safety. To summarize what we have reviewed in this presentation, for ultrasound scanning, the proper use of barrier protection and the cleaning, disinfecting, and sterilization of ultrasound equipment is essential to reduce the risk of cross-contamination and transmission of disease between patients and staff. Both the operator and patient need to be protected from communicable diseases, and this is readily achievable with the appropriate use of the correct transducer cover. Thank you.